Hey folks, my name is Ravish and welcome back to another video. Now, in today's video, we are going to discuss a very important topic in Terraform that is Terraform modules. So we are going to understand what exactly is Terraform modules and we are going to understand it. First of all, we are going to take an example like why do we need that? What exactly is a principle that it works upon? And that's we are going to elaborate further. And before moving further in this video, I would like to request kindly subscribe to the channel because it really motivates me to create more content like this. All right. So let us dive right into the video. Okay. So there is first thing that why do we need Terraform modules and what exactly do I need to know before understanding or working on Terraform modules? Okay. So first of all, you need to know what exactly is a dry principle. So dry principle is basically specifically applied for the software development area. So if you have heard about the patterns, the design patterns, there is a kiss pattern, there is a dry pattern and several other patterns, right? So dry principle is basically don't repeat yourself. So if you have a pattern which is repetitive in nature, there is no need to write that code again and again. So that is one thing that you need to know. So it's basically a principle of software development that aims at reducing the repetition of patterns and code duplication in favor of abstraction and avoiding redundancy. So if you go about a lot of principles, you can find a dry principle over there. So, okay. So that's the one thing that you need to understand. Okay. So the next thing is what you need to understand is why Terraform module? Why do we need a Terraform module? So as your Terraform configuration becomes more complex, modules can be used to organize and simplify them. You can also share modules within your organization or with the Terraform community. And this, comes straight from the website of Terraform. So Terraform has basically dedicated, has a dedicated blogs in which they guide about Terraform modules. So they talk about using modules. So basically when you use a module, the Terraform registry hosts hundreds of modules contributed by Terraform community. Modules from the registry and other locations can be used to enhance your Terraform configuration. All right. So that's the basic idea of it. Now, do not worry if you do not understand much from this text. We are going to take an example and we are going to understand by drawing a diagram that how we create a Terraform module. How do we use it and why do we need it? All right. So let's directly dive into the visual understanding of it. OK, so we'll understand what exactly is a module structure. All right. So before understanding that, if you want to read it in 1.25 X or 1.5 X, you can do that. All right. So let us understand how does a module structure look like. So let us consider a directory. So there could be any directory and in that we create a few files, right? So the first file could be your license file. And a lot of people do not have this. A lot of people have this. So it doesn't matter if you do not have this. Then we have a readme md file. So we have a readme md file. In this file, we generally write the components and stuff. I'll explain about each and every one. Let me write all of them. Then we have a main.tf. You must have heard about this. TF is the extension. Then we have variables. So let's write that variables.tf. And then we have outputs. .tf. Okay. This is a general idea basically. So your module can have a lot of things more than that and less than that. But this is a basic idea of a module structure. OK, so first understand what exactly is a license file. So license will contain the license under which your module will be distributed. When you share your module, the license file will let the people know it terms under which it has been made available. Terraform itself does not use this file. All right. So that's one thing to know about. All right. The second thing is readme md file. It will contain documentation describing how to use your module in markdown format. So MD means markdown. So basically Terraform does not use this file, but services like Terraform registry and GitHub will display the contents of this file to people who visit your module Terraform registry or a GitHub page. This is very common in a GitHub repository. You must have seen it a lot of times. All right. Now let's dive into the main.tf. So main.tf will contain the main set of configuration for your module. You can also create other configuration files and organize them however makes sense for your project. So if you're creating any sort of project, main.tf is the first file that Terraform going to look. The next file is variable.tf. Do not get confused if it is variable or variables.tf. All right. This file will contain variable definitions for your module. 
when a module is used by others the variables will be configured as arguments in the module block since all terraform values must be defined any variables that are not given a default value will become required arguments variables with default values can also be provided as module arguments overriding the default value this can sound a bit of confusing right now but when we'll do the demo this will be much more clearer to you all right the last file is outputs.tf or an output.tf file this file will contain the output definition for your module so module outputs are made available to the configuration using the module so they are often used to pass information about the parts of your infrastructure defined by the module to the other parts of your configuration so that's how an output file will work for you okay so uh, there are other files to be aware of so I'll, I'll write good to know so this is something you good to know okay I'll write them with this color turquoise color okay so one file you must be aware about is terraform .tf state okay so terraform.tf state or sometimes when you take a backup of it so it is sometimes called terraform.tf state dot backup something like that if you take a backup of it all right these file contains your terraform state and are how terraform keeps track of the relationship between your configuration and the infrastructure provisioned by it it does not matter what public cloud or what cloud you use it just maintains the relationship between your configuration and the infrastructure provisioned by it all right the next file you must be aware about is dot terraform okay so this is one extra file so this directory contains the modules and plugins used to provision your infrastructure these files are specific to a specific instance of terraform when provisioning infrastructure not the configuration of the infrastructure defined in .tf files all right so this is one another thing do not be confused about this we'll do the demo and we'll understand that but we need to know the basics first we need to know everything in a text format so that you might be having an idea all right and there is one more file which you need to know the name can be anything so i am putting asterisks over here dot tf wars file so since module input variables are set via argument to the module block in your configuration you don't need to distribute any asterisks dot tf wars files within your module unless you are trying to also also using it at standalone terraform configuration all right so this is one thing and at the end there is one more file which you must be a lot of people have heard about it seen about it and use as git ignore so this git ignore file is basically uh, that comes from github and whatever you write in this git ignore file gets ignored at the time of check-in okay so this is one thing okay so that is basically an idea of what exactly a module structure is and these are the good to know files now we'll understand how does a module work and how it looks like all right so let me just scroll it over here and i'll select some other color okay and let's understand that. okay so let us understand how does it work let me select this color now consider a situation in which your root module has a lot of files okay in this you are creating first ec2 server okay dot tf it might have some code then you are creating a second ec2 server okay it might have some code same thing goes for everything and you have n ec2 dot tf and it has the code now what is happening in every code what you will find is that okay so i've already drawn the diagram over here and let us understand this so in this first ec2 instance dot tf code the code will look something like this all right so this would be the code for the first file the second file is going to have exactly the same code for creating your aws instance but all it differs is instead of one it would be two for here it would be the third file so it would be three and till n and so on and so forth so this is basically you are going to do it 
going to use t2 micro if same instance type same ami same aws instance so tomorrow what happens if your manager asks that you have to create hundreds of instances i'll write hundreds of instances are you going to create hundreds of tf files over here no you're not going to do that right similarly if it scales up to 1000 you're not going to write 1000 tf files over here right so in general scenario whenever there is a service that is written it has some code okay so if this is code for ec2 instance and this is code for ec2 instance they both are exactly the same and this service by this service what i meant is it can be ec2 it can be s3 it can be rds it can be any service that is existent on aws all right so we are not going to repeat the code every time because we don't want to do that right as a programmer as a infrastructure as a code we always follow the principle of try which means don't repeat yourself all right so that's why we are not going to do that what we are going to do we are going to take the common code from this and this and the other files and put it in one separate file and this file is going to be put in a separate folder that is would be called your module and this can be named I'll, I'll take it as Ravish or it can be your common infra the name could be common infra okay now this common infra is going to have a main.tf file or a variables.tf file or there could be other files as well and the service folder that you have in which you already have a main.tf you will be having a main.tf dot here all right and uh, let me remove this so that i can draw it again so that you will understand okay i'll create it again now this main.tf had the had a lot of code right and this also had the same code this and this code is same when you took the common code from here you will now convert these files into something like this module the name of the module source the name of the source like the place where you have kept the code and this is going to make a call to this folders main.tf and your common infrastructure code is going to be executed every time now this file will be over here and this file will be over here and with just a minor change in the variables file so all you have to do is you just have to pass the appropriate variables and the code that is going to be executed would be this code so all the code that you had written over here would be transferred to a separate module and your code will be beautified i'll show you with an example now if so there are multiple folders and now you have created is for ec2 you have created for s3 you have created for your networking and you have created for your db now there is a approach a module a pr modular approach and this would be a generic approach okay in generic approach you have one folder and you write everything over here and this looks quite cumbersome you have everything we are creating for servers you will be writing as server.tf there would be s3.tf there would be network.tf there would be a lot of tfs over here main main.tf and then you have your variables.tf that doesn't look good right so you will create a module approach in which you have all the code of modules over here in you in this folder you will have your main.tf and or your variables.tf same thing main.tf variables.tf main.tf variables.tf main.tf and variables.tf and this is going to beautify the code and every time that you want to create an ec2 instance you don't have to do stuff over here right you can just make a call let's say tomorrow if your if your manager asks for something you create a new folder okay so your new folder will come something like this new folder and in that new folder if you want to create a service which is ec2 instance you're directly going to make a call over here let me drag it and this is going to use this code and going to create an infrastructure for you and this will make your life a lot more easier 
So this is a basic understanding of how does a module work. Okay, so one more example for this. So here you can see that there is a resource over here, right? And this is AWS security group. This is the name and this is the name for that ELB SG. Okay, and then there is an ingress for this. Now, what we're going to do, you can see the values are hard coded over here. Let me select red color. Value is hard coded over here. Value is hard coded over and so on and so forth. Now, whenever you use a module, you don't have to hard code it. Okay, you can pass it with these kind of variables. You can see the app port and at the runtime, you can pass it or you can give it in the new child module. Okay, so you can see an example over here that there is a resource. There is a security group over here. All right. And here it's the name. Here is an ingress for this. Now, if this file is written 10 times for everything, you are having a code that is using itself a lot of time. I mean, it's repetitive in nature. All you have to do when you create a new file, you create something with a module name, you can give it a name and you just give it a source. So when this source, it will make a call to this file and executes everything that is written in it. And then it will create your instance. All right. So this is how it works. So in this example, you can see we are talking about the AWS security group. It can be anything. It can be S3 bucket. It can be EC2 instances. So now we are creating a new service. This is a new service, right? So when we creating a new service, we are not writing the exact same code by copying it over here. And we are just creating a module SG module for this. We are making a call to this source and this will come over here and it will create an create a service for me and that's how it works folks all right so this can be confusing as of now but when i'll create a diagram when i'll create a new video on this i will give you a demo so that you can understand it fully all right so if there is any confusion over here which can be because it can be it can sound and see a bit of overwhelming right now but do not worry about it i'd make it simple when i'll do the coding part all right so folks if you have any question feel free to comment below and we will address that. So thanks guys and I'll see you very very soon in the next video.